What is up, brothers and sisters? It's Jay Campbell, and you're listening to the Jay Campbell Podcast. Join me for regular deep dives with amazing beings whose work is manifesting a golden age. And remember, you create your reality by your focused thoughts, conscious words, and intentional actions. Raise your vibration to optimize your love creation. Hey guys and gals, what's going on? Don't ever wait for your doctor to order blood tests. With Private MD Labs, you can get your blood test prescription online in under one minute and go directly to over 4,000 lab locations in the United States. They offer every blood test imaginable at affordable prices with highly accurate results from tried and true state-of-the-art blood testing diagnostics. In fact, I've been using Private MD Labs for more than a decade. Their blood tests are much more in-depth and accurate than any at-home pinprick or worthless saliva test. Skip the intrusive doctor questions and get the exact tests that I recommend. Be proactive and get your panels today. Go to privatemdlabs.com forward slash JC to take 15% off your order. Send you guys love and light. Well, hello, ladies and gentlemen, wherever you might be around the world. I am Jay Campbell, and you are listening and watching the Jay Campbell podcast. And today is actually the first podcast that I'm doing in person with an amazing soul by the name of Evan McDermott. Evan, how are you, brother? Oh, I'm doing great. Thank you for having me here and at your beautiful space. That I feel very welcome in and at home. So it's it's an honor to have you, man. So you guys, let me give you guys Evan's background. Evan is a true, is what I would call him, an ascended master in a physical body. He's a young guy, only 25, about to be 26, correct? A couple of weeks. A couple of weeks away from being 26. And he spent uh, about a day, a little less than a day with me, maybe a day. And uh, we're doing this podcast in person. I've actually been on his podcast already before amazingly enlightened young guy um he's already had david ike on his podcast so this is going to be an amazing show let me give you guys a little bit about who he is he's an educator author a spiritual guide and he is the host of his own podcast which is the fifth dimension podcast and his mission is to raise human consciousness huh i wonder if he's ever heard that before <laughs> uh, by illuminating the path of a self-exploration which is amazing. In all areas of his work, he looks to realign people to the higher purpose that already exists inside of them. After experiencing a quantum spiritual awakening in 2017, he discovered the nature of interconnectivity that obviously exists between all life along with the responsibility that comes with this truth. Evan is part of a generation of light workers that see beyond the illusion of our current way of living and is working to shift earth into its next evolutionary paradigm, which I would call the new earth. Um, Welcome to the Jay Campbell Podcast, brother. Wow, thank you for having me here. Such a pleasure. Such an honor. Beautiful. Okay, so let's just go into what we're going to talk about, which with you and me could be anything. But let me just ask you, as we did on your podcast, um, and by the way, for everybody, today is Saturday, December 4th, um, for the point of demarcation of where we are. Like, what's happening right now, brother? Like, what, what is your take on as we move into 2022 and beyond? Like, where is the earth going? I mean, I could obviously place my own projection from what I see. I mean, it's impossible to say exactly what's happening, but I feel a shift within me personally. I know you feel it as well. Mm -hmm. And I really feel like we are forging a higher timeline. I feel the energy rising within myself. Like I I tell everybody I want who asks me like what we're moving into, like I can't give a direct picture, but it feels like a beautiful time to be alive, a beautiful time to witness this and sort of step in to really the full responsibility of why we're here. I mean, I feel like the show is just getting started. So like we're kind of in the preparation phases. This is the last, I mean, really almost two years at this point in terms of what's going on on the global scale. It's been, you know, it's been the time for us to really take initiative of self-responsibility and look inward and really, uh, prepare ourselves to be who we are meant to be and step into ourselves fully, like with authenticity. So uh, I think we're going to continue down that path, especially 2022. It's, you know, going into the new year. I I, I think there's going to be a lot of challenges, a lot of things that we have to tackle head on inward, outward. Yeah. And 
you know, just keep our hearts open and go from there. But it, it's a beautiful opportunity if we allow ourselves to, I'd say, take that mindset. Beautifully said. Um, yeah, I mean, I, you know, I, I obviously, you know, I had, had some, you know, awesomely profound conversations in the last day together, you know, and again, it's always an honor when I find a person of a light, you know, that I can spare or spend time with and just connect with and just talk about things. And um, I really do think that 2022 is the year that all is going to be revealed. I, I don't think that, I think that 2020 and 2021 were the training wheels years, right? Yeah. Like we, we experienced COVID or whatever it is, the scamdemic, the pandemic, you know, whatever you, whatever you want to label it as, depending on like, you know, where you are in the consciousness matter scale. But um, 2022 to me is going to be the time where the band-aids come off right yeah. it's just rip it off it's time to like show everybody what's really happening and you know without getting into negative things i think from a soul level you and i both agree that everybody is choosing exactly the path that they need to be on right right so from a soul evolution and growth standpoint if you choose the v that's great you choose not the v that's great too you know it's where you are placing your consciousness right now at this very moment and again that is perfectly okay in the divine timeline of things exactly right um okay so your first bullet point and we're gonna go all over the place i can already right tell on this yeah. podcast is you know <laughs> building new earth systems um education which is obviously your current focus let's yeah. talk a little bit about that yeah certainly i mean i come from a teaching background so i mean i've worked in the public schools i've seen i've gotten all the public school teaching training i've seen all the uh you know, and I went to college in Massachusetts, which is one of the hubs of, I guess, the, I guess, indoctrination in sure. terms within our public schooling. And, yeah, you know, I would say for myself, in terms of building like a new, a new model, it's really come back to, I mean, my, my focus on this is constantly changing, but I, I, I think we have to recognize the foundation of the systems that we are living in, the foundation right. of our systems now. I, they are to their core. There's such a level of corruption, deception, right. and basically, basically, I mean, if we look back and, and like education, for example, the history of education, I mean, it was founded as a like prior to public education in America, for example, there were th there was a thriving like educational free market where right. people kind of self educated, and there was an extremely high literacy rate, upwards of ninety percent. Like yeah. you don't hear about those kind of things, right? But the current public school model was built for as a tool for like a common culture and like governance and, the, right. and obedience. Right. So, you know, the current model, I think we have to recognize there isn't I mean, it's it, it's certainly important to fight for justice within it, if, especially if you're you have kids within it and you have a level of attachment to it. But we need to start constructing new ideas and new frameworks and new ways of actually organizing ourselves within the world as opposed to trying to cling on to the old and that's really where i find myself it's building up these new educational models building up a new framework like what does true education mean at its core like how do we all become lifelong learners not just in the adolescent stage but set a foundation for a, a, a continual self-exploration throughout life and establishing that early on within school systems and that's something i'm very interested in but i'd say that is that is the mindset I think we need to approach here and not not just try and save the schools because mm -hmm. I, I think we there, there's value in that and mm -hmm. there's discussions to be had about that. But for me, it's a time to look to the future. Like, what is the actual models that we need? Right. And I, I think it starts with a, a framework for self-exploration, self-discovery and self-responsibility and all that encompasses. That's beautiful. I mean. I mean, I could make my own comments, but I'll just ask you because, you know, this is an interview for you. I mean, I personally talk to guys and gals now every day who's, you know, their parents and they have kids that are in high school or grade school. You know, obviously my kids are right at the cusp of going into high school and they're homeschooled. Yeah. We're in California, so they can't, you know, quote unquote, even go. And so they're homeschooled. But a lot of people are saying to me now, Evan, that college is dead. I mean, you know, yeah. they've created now, again, whatever you want to call them, indoctrination camps of progressive, you know, information or progressive, you know, whatever you want to call it, culturalization or normalization of those progressive mindset ideas. And it's not the spirit of education. 
right? It's more about uh, conditioning people to think a specific way. Like you said, the obedience factor, like go along, get along, right? There's no, they're, they're really going away from teaching people critical thinking and discernment. Yeah. Because again, they, I mean, let's face it, you know, the corporations run everything. The corporations want people to be a hive mind. They want yeah. to brainwash the majority of people to be followers and not leaders. And that's exactly. kind of where we're at, right? So, I mean, like in your opinion, I mean, you know, and you and I both went to college and graduated from college and stuff like that, but is college now not really the ultimate option for a sixth to an eighth grade child? I mean, I mean, where are we on that now? I personally think that college, I mean, I, I look back and I, I was at college recently, you know, you said I'm only 25, so I was right. there three years ago. Right. I'm grateful for the connections I made in, right. the, in the foundation that it gave me in terms of, okay, I can go with a degree, go teach a public sure, school. Sure. sure. I, I guess there's a level of value in that. There's a level of value of titles within this sure, matrix system. Sure, sure. But at the same time, I, I don't believe college is going to, in, unless you're going for something very specific, maybe there is an instance where there's one particular job or one particular degree, but even then I can't think yeah. of one off the top of my head. So right. maybe there isn't. I don't think that is a necessary step for people moving forward. And I think it's actually... I noticed within myself, finding myself, to, I, and it was, it's tough for me to understand. I've mm -hmm. always been somebody who likes to question things. Sure. So a lot of the ideas didn't make sense, but they, a lot of men in college, for example, and I felt this within myself, they've become ashamed of masculinity, for example. They, exactly. they, they shame masculinity. They push on these ideologies that are really low vibrational and mm -hmm. low self-worth. And right. the whole ideology of campuses really embody that so i think if somebody wants to become a sovereign the like empowered individual there are paths and unfortunately there isn't a lot of paths that are put or i would say presented yeah that besides college obviously there there's not a lot of paths that are presented to youth so they don't they think college is the only option but i think we need to start if we can frame in the like let's say you're homeschooling your kids when they reach the age of college, them knowing that they're sovereign individuals right. and they're able to create their own story, their own path, they won't need to go to college because they'll be empowered to go do something else. Right. I mean, I've connected with people on Twitter lately who they call themselves money Twitter, yeah, and, but they're all about building the online businesses. Right. They're all about building your sort of own platform, your right. own way of being. And I think right. that's really the future and, you know, going back to what I was talking about earlier, how they had an educational free market way a long time ago, like 1700s, when somewhere like Harvard was first established, I mean, that was a very select group of people who went there to mm -hmm. study a very specific thing, right? like law or very right. specific, uh, you know, governance types of medicine, things. right? Right. And so in most people, they would learn trades, they would learn skills, they would learn really how can they harmoniously survive in society and like contribute right. and serve? Right. And we've really lost that within our higher education systems, which is unfortunate because I, I do believe at one point college was a, uh, it was the right path for, for specific people. But right. now it's you, you tell everybody they need to go and it loses its true value. And it's been corporatized, right? right? Like the system in America, especially, or even in the West, and really even in Europe now, it's just all one giant corporatocracy. Oh, yeah. Everything is corporatized. It's all about the bottom line. It's all about profitability. You yeah. know, if we start talking about the whole ancient gods from the Bible or the biblical text of, you know, whether they were archons or reptilians or both or any of that stuff, you know, everything that came from that uh, group or those beings was hierarchical, dominate, divide and conquer, out-compete, you know, no compassion, no empathy, just destroy war, make war, you know, kill your enemies. And so like even our entire corporate mindset of the planet, I mean, that's what I always tell people is like, if you just understand the basic fundamental ideology of a corporation, it is to have no competitors. It is literally to win at all costs, to right. dominate the marketplace. So there's no equality, there's no egalitarian sharing of, of assets and resources. It's literally dominate, win, you know, continually cut expenses, continually out compete, and again overcome uh, the, the the competition. So again, these are all like what I call third dimensional 
uh, constructs. They're not based in a fourth or fifth or even higher uh, state of vibration or awareness where people are sharing, they're co-creating, they're cooperating. This is all about competition and destroy your enemy. And again, where this comes from, you know, we could debate that and go deeper into that, that mindset, but that is from a standpoint of right now, that is third dimensional consciousness. And we are leaving third dimensional consciousness. A lot of us already have, we're still straddling say between third, fourth and fifth dimension, you know, based on our attachments in the, what we would call money magic system or the matrix, because again, we do have to make money. We do have to pay bills right. as Rex bear always says bills and issues. Everybody's got them. <laughs> Right. But that's also a third dimensional construct. So it's like you want to get to a place where you're not worried about your bills and issues, but at the same time, able to navigate paying the bills and dealing right. with the issues. But it's not easy, um, you know, depending on your level of vibration. And as you know, you know, a lot of people that are vibrating down here in what I call victimhood or fear, it's obviously everything is fear or love. But uh, if you're vibrating in victimhood, it's a lot harder to truly become aware that you don't have to constantly be attached to, again, your problems and your issues. Right. And most people in the third dimension or just all of us in humanity, you know, the ego, which was obviously built for survival purposes, is still calling the shots when you don't need to be in survival. You're living in a very advanced culture. You don't wake up in the morning looking over your shoulders for the saber tooth tiger who's about to eat you. Right. You know, you're most most people are living in a bed with a pillow. I mean, the comforts, the creature comforts that people have today are so outlandishly overwhelming in comparison to just a hundred years ago or right. go back a thousand years ago, right? So it's like all of us have to learn, and again, that's the path that you have to control the ego. The ego is still there to keep you alive, but you don't need to be focused on staying alive and you need to tame or control or kick back or even like just you know really push on, on underneath um, the higher self of, of, of communication and expression so that your ego is not calling the shots. But as you know, with what's happened in the last two years, with the fear and the doom and the gloom narrative that comes out across all of these sliding sc or face screens or what I, whatever you want to call them, glass screens, it's difficult for a human being to process that information and not go into this. Right. And so that's where the real job is today is like knowing that you are at your divine essence, you know, a, a consciousness itself and recognition that, you know, any of this stuff that you see, again, the sensing of physicality and a materialism and stuff like that is really an illusion. And so how do you balance again, being just being in resonance, serving creation or humanity at your highest and best good while realizing that all of this stuff is illusion and to be attached to it just bogs you down. Right. It's the creation of suffering, the attachment. And I think that's, that's really where I find my focus giving almost, you know, in our society within this third dimensional realm, there's such right. a, a crisis of meaning. Exactly. There's such a crisis of people thinking, I think people are starting and this is just generally people who are living within this, matrix system and having these attachments they're starting to realize that there is that there is something more Absolutely. out there in all of these material goods and these ideologies and ways that we've defined ourselves in the past they don't bring a deeper sense of meaning and there's something missing at the soul level mm -hmm. and so you know that's why a lot of people i are waking up and turning to alternative paths and alternative methods mm -hmm. and now we really have the opportunity to create the structures so, because you know, we've been on our own journeys individually. Mm -hmm. we've, we've had to go through our own trials and tribulations, yeah. and uh, to kind of get to where we are. And so, we can provide the structures and provide uh, help people integrate this this sort of higher understanding of themselves and let them take the journey. I mean, because we can't can't take the journey for them. I mean, they have to ultimately go inward. We can provide the structures and spaces to uh, illuminate the path. Yes, you could say. Beautiful. And show them which way, or I guess suggest which way they can go. Hey guys, what's going on? If you're looking to level up your life from a mind, body, and spiritual perspective, join the Fully Optimized Health private membership group today. There is no better place online to discuss hormones, peptides, fitness, fat loss, supplements, and even raising your consciousness with an elite tribe of men and women. You also get to speak to me directly every single week in the Ask Me Anything. Join today. Go to fullyoptimizedhealth.com and sign up and I'll see and talk to you soon.
I mean, the path is inward. You and I both know yeah. that. I mean, anybody who's a true seeker, who's contemplative, introspective, you know, using meditation, using affirmation, using, you know, whatever you want to call it, morning ritual practices, understands its stillness and, you know, attaining that mind silence to really seek and, and find the answers, right? Because everything is internal. Nothing is external. Yeah. But let me ask you, like, obviously a lot of shifts have happened in the last two years. A lot of people have awakened to a new reality, expectation, feelings, whatever it is. Like, what do you really think, though, from a percentage wise, how many people have truly shifted from a standpoint of like, they are not now um, completely asleep. And again, we're not labeling or judging. We're just uh, from a point of statement, but like how many people, what, what do you think the new, the percentage of people on planet earth now that are truly like walking a path of like, Oh my God, everything I thought is bullshit. Hmm. It's, it's tough to put an exact percentage on it. Mm -hmm. I mean, I still want to say it's, it's not a majority. Oh, That's no, sure. absolutely not even not. close to majority. Yeah, I right. mean, we're talking maybe right 10 15 percent at most okay so you're say. so you're of the same mindset of 15 percent because that's what i would say I, you yeah. know when i was reading the works of dr hawkins you know he was saying that it was between seven and twelve percent and it would shift all the time it would drop and it would go up and it would drop and it would go up and then then you know maybe even the, the the really high level muscle applied kinesiologist the muscle testers out there you know will actually test the collective consciousness the, the collective vibrational frequency and you know, the people that own the company uh, focus life force energy, which are like really high level masters of Hawkins's technology and utilizing, and they have like a quantum field technology that measures the collective vibration. And they said that in September of 2019, it got up to almost 250. It was like 242 collectively, which if we would have gotten neutrality, the matrix would have ended. Right. We would have collectively, you know, gotten the field to where people were like, why are we fighting anymore? Why do we have differences? We're all human. We're all unified at the soul level. And then, of course, the dark side, the left-hand path, whatever you want to call them, hit us with COVID. And it went down as low. And again, this is according to them and their technology. But it went down as low as, if you can believe it, this year in April, the lowest it's been measured. And it was about somewhere between 60 and 70 or 60 and 72, I think they told me, which is, again, you know, literally in pure fear, despair. You're, right. you're, you're right in that level of apathy, hopelessness, regret, despair. And it's come back up again a lot. These guys message me, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm like an affiliate or whatever for their technology and stuff like that. So I get their email updates and stuff like that. But now they're saying that it's back up over the line of integrity and it's somewhere in the low 200. So it just shows you that even though the dark side tried to bring us down in the last year and a half was what they've done, human consciousness is still rising. Now, right. obviously we're nowhere close to again, being at neutral, neutrality or even satisfactory or trust or optimism or willingness. But dude, when we get to that level in humanity, and you're right, we don't know, we can make predictions, but let's just say in the next three to five years, and I'll ask you for your opinion, but let's just say in the next three, three to five years that we get there, yeah. what happens to the planet? Do we, and again, it's an opinion question, but do, does the planet, do all the 3D matrix control systems unravel in a controlled demolition or do we have like crazy shit? Like, do we have zombie apocalypse? You know, I don't think we have zombie apocalypse. I don't think it gets to that level of chaos, but, you know, we have to essentially go through a death experience yeah. in order to be right. reborn on the other side. So right. that within a, a death experience, that means the facing of the shadow. That yeah. means feeling the true essence of what we have been living under mm -hmm. and the illusions and the fear, right, and the pain, illusion. you know, yeah. and actually facing that. And in order to do that, like there has to be a level of chaos. There has to be a level of darkness. And I, I think I, I don't envision it getting to the point where you have an Armageddon where people are running through the streets like mad. Right. And it's like, right. I don't think, I think maybe it is more of a controlled demolition type of style especially if we do reach a hot or in a higher state, a higher right. frequency, right. we're going to be much better able to navigate that. Right. Right. As opposed to if anything, with our, our creation of new systems and our creation of new ideas and really having these visionary, uh, uh, like a, an ideal, something mm -hmm. that we can strive toward and work towards, 
if anything, the other systems will sort of fall as a byproduct mm -hmm. of our creation of something new. Right. So in a simultaneous death experience where we have to let go, we have to, you know, there's going to be levels of grief. There's sure. going to be pain. Yeah. There's going to be death. Death. In a, in, a, in a physical, literal sense and in a, in a metaphorical, spiritual, spiritual right, sense, right? right? So we have to feel that. Yeah. Uh, but at the same time, there's going to be a rise and there's going to be a rebirth. And it, it's going to be uh, a, really overwhelming in a lot of mm -hmm. ways. But I, th mm -hmm. I, I think it's going, there's going to be a lot of light on the other side of it. And that period of darkness is, I guess, I mean, time is really an illusion. So the, the total time <laughs> is... I think it'll be minimal compared to the light that we see on the other side. Like we won't even, we'll look back and chuckle at it and say, all right, that was our necessary period for us. It'll be a necessary transformation period. And the systems are already revealing what they are. Right. The darkness is already revealing what it is. It's already out in the open for people like us. We've already right. done a level of processing and allowing it to die within ourselves. Right. 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 So that, that's in everybody who does that now and, and faces that head on now, it makes that grace period collectively later on go more smoothly and allow it to transition at a much more natural uh, space. Space, really. It's beautiful. So we, we talked about this yesterday, uh, but I, you know, I'll just get your opinion on the podcast since really off the path. But I mean, is what's really happening right now, if we, if every so here's the best way to say it. if everything that we've ever been taught for thousands of years is actually an inversion yes isn't the ultimate irony right now also that what is happening right now that most people see from a superficial top side level is also an inversion and that i mean what i mean is that all these people are actually in fear consciousness and so they are Again, at a soul level, we're not talking third dimension, we're talking about a soul level. They are choosing the path that allows them to opt out to allow more light in. Is that what's happening? I mean, it makes sense. I think so. I think it's a real possibility because naturally, I mean, if you're in a fear resonance and there is light, there is a tremendous amount of this higher vibrational yes. energy yes. pouring in. Yes. And we feel it within ourselves. Absolutely. It's happening. Absolutely. We all know it's happening. Yeah. I'm sure all of the listeners have that knowing as well, yes. then yeah, that would make energetic sense. There's going to be that almost that opt out. It's like, this is an escape from right. this sort of paradigm from this reality. Well, it, It's like they are in a physical third dimensional level, scared shitless. Yes. But at a soul level, they're like, I know that I am not in the right place and time for me. So by opting out, I will either a reincarnate, and not be as fearful or just opt out and let someone else who isn't fearful come in and take my spot, right. which again, as you said, energetically, if, if more light comes in, then just naturally consciousness elevates. Right. And once that elevation gets again to neutrality, willingness, optimist, tr optimism, and trust, then boom, the matrix unravels. Exactly. I mean, it literally unravels overnight, but again, we have to have enough people. And as you know, um, and again, Dr. Hawkins said this, it doesn't take a giant majority. It just takes a select minority vibrating at a specific, much higher rate than down here, but like into the 400s, into the 500s, you know, somewhere between understanding reverence and love to lift the vibrational frequency of the masses, exactly. right? So we just need to get enough of us. And maybe, you know, you said it's 15% that are awake now. Maybe it's 17 and a half percent. Maybe it's 20 and 22%. But there's somewhere north of where we are now that once we get to that level, we bring the collective consciousness or that, you know, I don't want to be egoic. We as a collective raise that consciousness to that place where, again, this uh, fear and control, guilt, prison control matrix just collapses. Right. And now people are out there questioning things, the system, the, probably the financial system, the government systems, whatever they are, they all just unravel. Right. You know, the United States breaks apart. Uh, the EU breaks apart. Again, all of the systems and levers of control that we've all been brainwashed and taught in the schools and all that stuff just unravel. And so now people, instead of like going, oh, my God, what are we going to do? Who do we write? We can't write letters to our politicians. The people go within and we internalize what we've always externalized, you know, again, because the majority have always given away their power. It'd been yeah. disempowered to the external savior, whether it was 
the church or the government or the doctor, my doctor says, right? Like whatever it is, it goes back now to this internalization of like, oh shit, I'm my own savior, right? I'm the only one that can get me out of this now because the systems don't exist. Right. They are not the answer anymore. I can't literally make an appointment with my doctor because there isn't a way to make an appointment with my doctor. So now, oh shit, I got to heal myself. Or if I don't know how to heal myself, there's that guy, Jay Campbell. There's that dude, Evan McDermott. You know, there's a thousand other of us out there that teach people self-healing. Right. So that's where I think, you know, in a quantum way, if that is truly the new earth or the golden age or whatever you want to call it, that fifth dimension. That's where it's going, where people start taking their power back by going inward. Exactly. Exactly. Right? And you have, and what you have from that is a world of sovereign, empowered exactly. individuals exactly. co-creating within communities. I mean, right. it's very exactly. difficult to, I mean, we are all one humanity, but right. it's very difficult to have a one size fits all structure in different pockets of, throughout the world and different types. Like you have different people in California versus Alaska and there's right. this and that. So you have people co-creating within their local environments and providing one another, like growing food and teaching within your communities and creating symbiotic right. harmony within the people around you and self-responsible. And you have people within in your life who can be help serve as a medicine man or, right. you know, help be a primary grower of food and, and you have all these different roles. Right. And similar to what, what we have now in a way, but it's, it's taking on a new approach and we live in more of a gift and barter economy. We serve for the, uh, just the knowing that that is what we are here to do. We're we give our gifts, give our talent, express ourselves fully. And then we create a symbiotic relationship with one another, with the earth. And we create new systems naturally that are just very in alignment with this frequency, ultimately of love and reverence right. and recognizing right. Uh, the divinity that exists within every individual who is here. Right. right? And that's exactly. sort of what we are. I'd say if we're going to paint the picture of the new earth, you know, that's what it's going to look like, but it's also going to look like a decentralized method where right. there is no top down structure right. because all top down structures inevitably become totalitarian right. in their nature right. all the time. That's what we've seen throughout history. And that's what's happening now. So that's right. the big, so the bigger question, we have a couple of really good bullet points, like the infinite nature of the self-exploration path, which is really what we're talking about. But I like what you just said about de decentralization. So, and again, I know you can't call it the, the future and you and I, time doesn't exist outside of this dimension, but like, you know, this always defaults back to, okay, where here we are, are December of 2021. Yeah. When is the things that we're talking about in a profound way on this podcast truly going to happen? And is it going to happen for everyone? Meaning are there truly just two separate timelines? And, and let's talk about this because we were talking about this yesterday and you and I talked about this on the podcast I did with you. It's like, ultimately, is there going to be a new earth golden age, fifth dimension timeline along with the transhumanist singularity cyborg timeline is that so. where it's going to happen well that feels like the nature of polarity exactly that feels like the nature of polarity right. I mean, you have energy right. you have an energetic response and you create the opposite response right that in the same right, right. Uh, so it, it does feel like there is not a for me it doesn't feel like a there's a point in me trying to quote unquote stop the transhumanism sure, sure. because i mean that's not all I can do is become divine, empowered, sovereign within myself yes, right. and illum help illuminate that path for others. Right. I mean, I met right. somebody last week who right. was a transhumanist and I, and we came to a mutual understanding of one another's paths. And that's really all I was like, that felt like enough for right. me personally. It's like, all Agree right. you're agreeing to disagree. Right. And in a sense, I, I understand why that, person the soul there is choosing to go down that path i understood maybe the soul contract that he took so i do think that you're almost going to have these two earths emerging right simultaneously i think it's happening now yeah and so the question becomes in that concept or that framework of two earths again and let's define it as pro-human which is divine empowered and free sovereign empowered and free versus the cyborg transhumanist, which is again, the person who's like, nah, you know, I don't care about that. I just want to have my artificial constructed reality. Right. I don't want to have, and, and again, you, yes, I can see the value of both because in that reality, they're not 
focused on doing. They're now going to be focused on being in an artificial construct. Right, exactly. But the artificial construct, the you know, again, my my concern and question mark over is who are you giving your power to? Right. Right. Exactly. Because the AI, let's just call it the dark AI, because it's definitely negative. We already know that, right? Like we are on our phones and one day all of a sudden you look down on it and it's recording what you're saying, right? Or you type something and then all of a sudden it starts typing for you, right? Like, so there is a Machiavellian, Machiavellian, Orwellian, overriding, dark, like, aspect in that it's recording it's listening yeah. it's observing it's violating your your basically sovereignty yeah okay so if that side is what you're choosing what are you really giving away your power to again and and, and again if we're talking about empowered sovereign and free divine we're taking our power and taking the responsibility that it's up to us Right. Those folks are giving their power away, which is, again, what I would define as victimhood. When you don't have power and the power that you seemingly choose to disown or disempower yourself by giving it to someone else. Again, it can be anything. It could be big pharma. It could be doctors. It could be the government. It could be the police. It could be whatever it is where you don't have ownership for it. Is that really, truly, Evan? in the big picture. And I know it's an opinion question, but is that really where you want to be? Cause again, that guy, you had that conversation and he proved his point that like, Hey man, I want to be on the side of the transhumanist because, but is that ultimately where his soul beings, is that where we really truly want to go? I mean, it's not where I want to go. Well, of course, <laughs> of course, of um, course. I, you know, I think maybe there are souls signing up for it in a sense. I, I, I part of me worries that, when you link yourself to this sort of artificial reality, right? right? right. That there is almost, well, there's almost no escape from it. Exactly. But I also don't believe that to be true in right. the sense that all of this technology, all of these sort of systems, they're finite, yeah. right? So right. there will totally. So in in a way, you're almost they're self replicating and they're self limiting automatically, exactly by their very nature. And so That's exactly right. And really, why people I, I've come to the realization why it, somebody egoically might want to be part of this sort of transhuman connect themselves to AI. It's really just a, a seeking of immortality, right? Without recognizing that we are already exactly and we're already immortal, right? We exactly already right. have we're infinite and eternal. So, so let me ask you because you just that's brilliant what you just said. So, is it really just a lack of spiritual awareness? Yes, hundred percent. That's what it is. I think it's a full. There's a, there's the lack. That's really what's created the systems as we have them now. It's right. a lack of the spiritual understanding of our own nature and fearing death. Right? right. Science has replaced for them the lack of awareness that they would have if they were spiritually discerning. Right. Exactly. And it's given and you see the the worshiping of science. Right. I mean, there is there is the technocratic gods. Right. Exactly. Show me your study, bro. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. And now they're viewing this artificial reality, the singularity, whatever you want to call it. That is the new God. And you can link no yourself God, to it. And it's, it's a self-sacrifice to this artificial reality there's R people who are willing to give up their physical bodies to enter it's into insane, this plane bro. literally insane and rudolf steiner called it the aramon right. right it's literally the technocratic psycho spiritual like you said it's it's a uh it's a singularity of a machine ai merging with biology right and it's playing god when you're not god i mean i mean let's just be honest it's literally saying that we're going to create extended life as you just called it immortality infinite whatever beingness but not of a human nature which as you and i know and we've talked about this at length um the max the the, the fear that is inherent in all physical avatar body beings is the lack of ex finite existence right it's yeah. death yeah it's physical avatar body death which is likely you know and it's probably debatable inevitable but we are not these bodies. We exactly. are we are divine, sacrosanct, plasma. I love to say this: plasmatic fire. We are mm. energy, and we are frequencies. Again, vibrating particles, standing waves, and we're not Evan. We're not Jay. We're not these physical bodies. Even our dog, you know, Thor over there, is not that. You know, we are literally spirits. We are, in essence, a spiritual. Again, those things I just talked about, but plasma, right? Yeah. Energy, like uh, this is an electric universe and all of us are energy. So 
when you understand that you're at base essence energy and you're not these physical bodies that you're attached to, um, you realize that you're right. You already said it. You're not going to die because energy is infinite and ever expanding. It cannot be contracted. All the laws of thermodynamics prove this. So having that awareness, not fearing physical avatar body death would never, in my opinion, never make someone choose the singularity, right? Exactly. Because they're choosing the singularity because in their life understanding or awareness, everybody dies and they're in fear of that. Exactly. When does that day coming? Oh my God, how do I prevent this? Right. And if anything, maybe the maybe souls choose the path That's of true, even in advance. the singularity in advance with the knowing that they need that extended, that period, extended period within period. this within this ego to come to that lesson. That's totally to true. To come right. to that understanding. So that's why it's you know totally who's to true. say they don't choose that path? Who's to say that that's not what they signed you up for? You could probably make that's beautiful. You could probably make an argument that ninety nine percent of atheists will choose the transhumanist agenda right. yeah. because they don't have that awareness and they want to gain that awareness. Hey guys and gals, what's going on? If you're looking to use peptides, make sure you go to my number one source, Limitless Life Nootropics. For healing with BPC-157 and TB-500 or fat loss with ipamorelin, CGC-1295 and AOD-9604 to immunity with TA-1, thymus and alpha-1, Limitless has a huge selection. Go to LimitlessLifeNootropics.com and use my code J15 to take 15% off your purchase. I send you guys tremendous love and light. This is so good. Let's back this up a little bit. Yes. We're all, and again, I'm you know, not quoting, but I'm paraphrasing the great Dr. Walter Russell. You know, we are at birth coming into these physical avatar bodies, and the journey is from the jungle to the top of the mountain, right? We're all walking that path. Yes. Each of us is walking that path, no matter what. As a soul, that's the path that you're walking. So as you said, if you're choosing transhumanism, you're an atheist, you have no spiritual beliefs, you have zero spiritual awareness. Um, you want to gain it because again, that path is back to perfection. So the, in order for you to get it through whatever resistance you have of not having it now, you have to experience the greatest contrast yes. and the greatest contrast is going to be provided by being a transhumanist, by being ultimately a cyborg, Yeah, having the negative energies or the parasitic energies or whatever you want to define them as like, I mean, maybe they have to torture you. Maybe it is like literally going through a psycho spiritual mechanical whatever you want to call it like hell of like oh shit i don't want to do this again because all the great hermetic teachers and precepts always taught that like what was once again is back again right so like no matter what you do you will eventually experience one side and back to the other in the third dimension okay. because it's polarized and duality so outside of the third dimension, it's not like that. So in here, we definitely do have to experience all of it. So it also goes back to like reincarnation. Uh, you know, if it's real, and obviously you and I both think that it is, you are experiencing so many varied lifetimes of experiences of being in the dark side, of being in the benevolent side, of choosing uh, to murder someone, to choose to save someone's life. I mean, you go through all these experiences so that your soul gains an awareness of like, how the best way to say it is like what not to do. Mm -hmm. And so to get to that place of like, you know what, I did all those things and this is the best strategy because I figured it out through experience, right? It's not just reading about it. That might be exactly what it is. So, you know, to what your point is, like you're saying that like they're only choosing transhumanism because that's going to evolve them on their soul path. Right. That's going to bring them back to their true nature in the end. And who knows how long that transhuman path is. I mean, I've heard exactly. people talk about, Oh, once you connect to the path, the transhuman path, you're stuck there forever. But I mean, all you need is one solar flare right. and the technology's right. wiped out. Right. And that's the end of that avatar. So right. it's I mean, exactly right. It's it's not going to last forever. I mean, it, it's impossible for it to last forever. I mean, this it's it's the step some souls are choosing to take. And in a way, I almost have to honor and respect that. You and, do. But then, you know, at the same time bring my own boundaries into it yeah. and, and speak on it and say, this is what I see based on the transhuman path. And hopefully, you know, illuminate the path, the other, the other side of that, the opposite polarity, the path going inward as maybe a few people will hear that and say, okay, I'm not going to go to the transhuman right. path after all. Right. Let me, 
let me see what you're talking about over here and still illuminate this path of love reference well, that's where we're within going. this physical body like here and now like we can we can achieve that on a collective scale and that's beautiful and that's the next two points to finish the show but like in truth to go back to what you just said which you beautifully said it is at a soul level they must undergo that contrast let's just call it their dark night of the soul to get to a higher level of awareness which is as you know really just luminosity it's allowing the soul to experience more light yeah that's literally all it is so if that means that physically they have to opt out of here which is again physical avatar body death to again let more light in whether that's them reincarnating as a less fearful being or it's allowing a non-fearful being to just come in the ascended master so to speak right so like they're still contributing at a soul level to the highest and best good of humanity elevating consciousness as crazy as that is yeah. right because like if we third dimensionally think of that we're like oh that person's locked in fear oh that's sad but that's just our judgment of it right so if we replace our third dimensional goggle view with a fourth dimensional fifth dimensional multi-dimensional higher aspect of things Again, it goes back to that statement that everything is happening exactly as it's divinely intended, always and in all ways, right? Like, I love that statement because that's truly, as divine beings, which is the base essence, all we really are, everything is always happening in the universe as it is supposed to. And if, exactly. we, can, if we can come to that awareness and not have attachments, because any attachments other than that, Evan, as you know, is our resistance to that statement. Exactly. It's our lack of faith. It's our, exactly, beautifully stated, it's our resistance to that statement. Okay, so the last two points are um, finding freedom by living in alignment with the heart's resonance. So I'll start by saying that, and you know this, uh, and you're so similar to me. I told you, like, when we just had lunch, I was like, we're on the same soul um, grouping. I, I just know we're soul brothers. But, like, for me, everything now, since I came back from Peru in 2019, is about teaching and again, not proselytizing, but just leading from the front that everything is about the only thing that matters now is, it, is, is, is raising human consciousness. And you and I and people like us, all we can do is, again, lead from the front, lead by example, talk about this, do these type of podcasts, explain to people, put that message out there. And then whatever happens after that message is creating ripples. And you and I are creating ripples of resonance. So talk about resonance, talk about what that really means. Because again, we say resonance, we say dissonance, we say raise your vibration. You know, a lot of people truly struggle to understand what that means. Can you kind of break it down? What does it mean to truly put yourself or place your awareness in resonance? What a beautiful question. I mean, so we have to think about in terms of resonance, we can picture, I would say a, a good start would be to look at ourselves, where are we right now? Like, right. who are we? And take a, a really radical look, response, like a radical responsibility, like perspective of ourselves. Mm -hmm. Where am I holding on to you fears or attachments? What we were talking about earlier within the systems and dependencies. And coming to the understanding that all of that stuff, all of the material things, all of the like money, wealth, whatever it may be, it's all, it's all like a game. Mm -hmm. Right. A lot of this stuff is a game and to truly come into resonance is to come into acceptance for mm -hmm. who we are, all mm -hmm. that we have done, right? Uh, all the whole past and taking responsibility for it. Maybe that doesn't excuse certain uh, things or ideas or uh, whatever has happened in the past, but it, it provides a new opportunity to move forward, right. to come into resonance is to come into your own inner power is to recognize that just by being here in this physical plane, you are divine, you yeah. are worthy. And there's something beautiful in that you chose to be here. So why, why did you choose to be here? How can you honor that choice and truly work to be in service? You know, when we can be in service to others, we're naturally going to be in service to ourselves. Right. Like we, exactly like what right. do we actually need for ourselves? I mean, we need the basic necessities, right? Food, water, shelter, sure. But beyond that is just being of service to others, not enough. Right. And if, you know, I guess if you were to answer no, like what are you actually seeking? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. really it's just, it's 
connecting to that soul purpose. Like this is why I'm here. Mm -hmm. And this is what I'm going to live by that foundational principle of who we are. And then giving that as a gift to the world, naturally you'll be in service for everybody around you, for the whole world, for you'll raise the collective frequency. And that's, that's ultimately what it means at the end of the day, finding the love for yourself within yourself and then committing to just giving that. I love that, man. Finding the love in yourself for yourself. Without love and trust of self, you can't love anyone else. And that's the biggest aha or gotcha that human beings have to get to, right? Because as you know, when we come out of the womb, after three to five years, we're not, we don't have that divine energy frequency signature anymore. The matrix has gobbled us up. We've got all these spell casting. We've got all these negative frequencies. We've got archons. We've got all sorts of like, uh, positive Elohim and negative Elohim everywhere. Right. And then we also have to overcome the brainwashing conditioning of our parents, which is coming from their parents and then their parents before them and that. Right. So there's all this like preconceived ideas, preconceived constructs that we are brainwashed to believe, whether it's religion, whether it's politics, whether it's race, I mean, all of these things. So it's like, it takes time to overcome, let's say that indoctrination to get to a place where, again, I am worthy. I love and trust myself. Yes. I mean, I literally was 42 years old before I started examining those questions where I literally could feel that I would love and trust myself. And as you know, it's still a battle. It's still yeah. every single day we wake up, uh, you know, you and I were today at breakfast, uh, you know, you're helping me with my course. And it's like, I'm attempting to self-identify, you know, limiting beliefs and all of these things to like do this, you know, webinar for the course and stuff like that. And it's highly relevant because like, I'm in my mind, like not, I, I have a block because like I can speak at the highest levels about the stuff I'm talking about, but like when I have to put in a framework of like what the limiting beliefs are, I have a resistance block of like, I can't do this mm-hmm. because this is not how I think. Or I come up with excuses. Like I, I can't think like a normie or whatever bullshit I tell myself. The reality of it is, is just, and again, it always goes back to a lack of love and trust of self that if you just know that, you know, the message will enter, right? You will receive the divine download. You know, it's always, uh, it's not thinking it's knowing, it, it, but, but knowing doesn't come until you do that inward practice until exactly. you sit in stillness. And again, I don't like to go into like a cliche, you know, woo woo, you got to meditate, bro, because (laughs) you you and I both know that meditation is many things to many different people. Exactly. And all you really need to do is literally listen to what I would call, and many people have said it before me, the still small voice. And the still small voice is God or your higher self or divine intuition, whatever you want to call it, that super consciousness that comes when you turn off the drunk monkey. When all of the thinking becomes being and you're sitting there, whether it's in nature or in a room in the darkness or, you know, in a infrared sauna, which you still haven't done yet. Mm. And, 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 you know, the, again, it's, 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 it's what I would call heart-based awareness or cosmic awareness. It, it's knowing it, it just, it enters into you. And then all the answers are there. And again, that is connection to what I call, I love to call the higher self this divine awareness, God source, the energy and frequency of all things. And it's regularly of practicing that attempt at stillness. And again, it doesn't come easy. You have to work at it. It's like anything. But when you do that, you become attuned and in tuned to that frequency of source, to that knowledge, that awareness, that, you know, uh, the Akashic records, the hall of records, like the, the knowingness of having all of the answers and you don't have to think them. They just come into your mind naturally. And all the great, the great teachers, sages, whatever of history, you know, would always say like to a person that the answers always came when they were focused on working on going within, whether it was meditation or introspection or contemplation or just sitting in nature, right? Like all the great sages said they would go into the forest and fast for 30 days. And in that time in the forest, I'm sure they were, you know, attempting to avoid whatever um, and live and, you know, work on survival programming, but that's when the answers would come. And they weren't sitting in the forest, like thinking, writing out, you know, theorems right? or on their screens, you know what I mean? So it's like, it really does come to a place of like, okay, I want to get to 
silence. I want to get work on my stillness practice, whatever you want to phrase it to. And then in that stillness and that regular contemplative practice, the answers all come. Right. Exactly right. And then it, it's sort of when you get into the flow of having this regular practice, you start to notice how frequently yes. they come. Yes. It seems they're always available yes. as long as you are open to receiving them. Exactly. So and that's, it's really getting to the point of past the limiting beliefs, past the ideas of, oh, I don't know how to meditate or, right. oh, I, I don't right. I don't have these grand right. ideas. Well, right. maybe it's because we you just haven't learned how to listen to that's them. That's exactly yet. right. Right. That's just exactly finding right. that that creative, like that higher voice within, because it's, it's always trying to communicate, always giving us signs, always giving us, uh, I guess, glimpses into mm -hmm. this higher awareness. And we just really need to take a step back and allow it to flow into us and it, observe it for what it is and not try and place our judgments upon what we think it should be. Final point, you already answered the question, but who are we? We are divine, sovereign, empowered, beautiful rays of light and we are here to usher in the new earth and usher in a new way of being and explore what it means to be in this human form you're the man bro oh, can you man. believe this guy is 25 years old uh jay campbell audience <laughs> uh so if somebody wants to work with you podcast with you connect with you coach with you because you also do that yeah um what is the best way they can do that uh, so my website is evanmcdermott.org. We actually have that. We can put that up yeah, there. evanmcdermott.org. I have my Instagram at evanmcdermott. I'm kind of shadow banned on there. So no. Yeah, I got a big shadow ban going right now. <laughs> so I mean, it might be kind of difficult to find me, but I'm there. I promise. If you just type it in and then on Twitter, evan underscore mcdermott. And my podcast is The Fifth Dimension. I mean, you can find it. All audio platforms. I mean, YouTube's kind of been taking out a lot of, of my course. videos. I right. got... So not all the podcasts are on YouTube, but some of them are. So you can find me on YouTube, but I would say the best place to go listen is just wherever you live. You're probably listening to, wherever you're listening to this podcast, yep. you can probably find mine. So just the fifth dimension and go listen to the episode I did with Jay. That was a good one. So yeah, I mean, honestly, uh Evan is my soul brother, man. Like we've only been in personally, physically together for about a day now or a little less than a half a day, or actually probably three fourths of a day, but uh we've been talking you know, via Twitter, via email. And this is, uh, you know, something that he came out from South Dakota to the West coast and was like, Hey man, I'd love to connect with you. And I was like, bro, of course, you know? And so it finally happened and, you know, we're making this podcast happen and this is awesome that we're doing it in person too. I really like this. It was very conversational, really good, but, uh, he is definitely from my soul family. He is exactly like me. He is a child of the light, uh, a new earth architect, a golden age creator, so I highly recommend that all of you guys and gals uh, go check out his uh, podcast, check out obviously his Instagram and check him out on Twitter. And he has an amazing podcast, which I'll put in the show notes here with David Icke, which I have not watched yet, which I am blown away. I can't wait to watch because I can't, I, I know the resonance that those two combine with. So all I can say is again, always support the amazing people that come on Jay Campbell, go to his uh, evanmcdermott.org for his website. And of course his social media on IG is Evan McDermott. And remember, raise your vibration to optimize your love creation. We will see you guys very soon.